Hare Krishna. So we can begin. Mm-hmm. Yes, Maharaj. You need to put the verse up on your screen. Yeah. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. This is from Srimad Bhagavatam, fourth canto, 29th chapter, talks between Nara and King Prachina Marhi, text 73. Artaya vidyamane pihi samsritse nani vartate. Dhyayato visayan asya svapnanarta gamo yata. Translation. When the living entity dreams, the sense objects are not actually present. However, because one has associated with the sense objects, they become manifest. Similarly, the living entity with undeveloped, undeveloped senses does not cease to exist materially, even though he may not be exactly in contact with sense objects. Hmm. Okay, Srila Prabhupada's purport. It is sometimes said that because a child is innocent, he is completely pure. Actually, this is not the fact. The effects of food of activities reserved in the subtle body appear in three concurrent stages. One is called bija, the root. Another is called kusta, kutasta, the desire. Another is called falonka, about to fructify. The manifest stage is called parabdha, already in action. In a conscious or unconscious state, the actions of the subtle gross bodies may not be manifest, but such states cannot be called liberated. A child may be innocent, but does not mean that he is a liberated soul. Everything is held in reservation and everything will become manifest in due course of time. Even in the absence of certain manifestations in the subtle body, the objects of sense enjoyment may act. The example has been given of a nocturnal emission in which the physical senses act even when the physical objects are not manifest. The three modes of material nature may not be manifest in the subtle body, but the contamination of the three modes reserved remains conserved in a due course of time it becomes manifest. Even if the reactions of the subtle and gross body are not manifest, one does not become free from the material conditions. Therefore, it is wrong to say that a child is good as a liberated soul. Om Gyanti Medandasya Gyanajana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasma Shri Guru Vinavaha Sri Chaitanya Manobhistam Stakitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Mupa Kedam Mayam Vedati Swapadatikam Namayam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamri Namaste Saraswati Deve Gorbani Pucharin Nirishi Sasunyavari Pastyat Yade Sitarine Panchakalpa Thru Vishya Kripa Sindhu Pae Vichya Vititanam Pavane Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Namaha Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya Prabhu, Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Sriva, Sadi Gaur, Bhakta Vindu. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hmm. When a living entity comes to the material world, it associates with the material energy, both on the gross and subtle level. On the gross level, we have the external manifestations of the sense objects. And on the subtle level, those external manifestations become stored there. And according to one's consciousness or one's activities, they may manifest on the subtle level. The example is given here in the dream. Although in the dream, there's no external sense objects, but because 
a living entity has been associated with these sense objects in previous experiences, they manifest themselves in dreamlike states. <clears throat> Even physical reactions happen in the dream, although there is no real object that is causing it. It's simply the subtle body is bringing up to the, to the conscious uh, level the appearance of these sense objects. So sometimes we see that even in a dream state, one is experiencing a very intense uh, experience, either happiness or distress. Because, uh, because of the appearance of sense objects. And therefore the mind in the state of swapna, swapna means dreaming, um, although it is not active on the physical level, the subtle level becomes active due to the previous experience with the physical level. Just like it, in the dream, one can even understand oneself as being different than the body. A dream is a nice uh, way or an example how to distinct yourself from your real self. Your false self is the sense of this body that we have which is made up of the gross material elements. As Krishna explains in the Bhagavad Gita, And then on the subtle level, So these uh, eight elements are both the gross and subtle manifestations of the material energy. And due to our contact with them, we, uh, what we say, we imbibe their experience. So sometimes we even dream of sense objects, even in a waking state, where we're thinking about some kind of experience we'd like to have, and we start meditating on them. And also, even in that state of consciousness, one is actually bringing about a certain change in consciousness based on the type of sense objects one is meditating on. That's why it says Dayato Visayam Pum Sam Sangat Sangat Sajayate Sangaya Chait Kama Kama Kodu Vijayate Koda Bhavati Samohan Samoham Sriti Vri Brahma Sriti Brahmsa Buddhina Sa Buddhina Sa Nashati. And by contemplating sense objects, one of the attachment for them, from that attachment, lust arises from lust. Anger from anger, bewilderment from bewilderment, intelligence is lost, and when intelligence is lost, one again falls down into the material consciousness or material pool of material energy. So we see the power of the mind. Even if the external sense objects are not personally present, still the mind can drag us to these objects because of our previous experience with these objects. Or we get into a state of dreaming daydreaming or night dreaming, either one of these uh, objects appear like that. Prabhupada wants to make an example by using a child here. Sometimes people think, well, children are innocent. Well, they are innocent in a sense, but they're not completely pure because although they haven't uh, experienced their internal material desires, Due to the childlike body, the body hasn't been able to manifest these desires yet in a waking state. Uh, the child appears to be innocent and pure, but actually it's not true. So that these sense objects or desires for sense objects, as Prabhupada mentions here, there are three states. One is called the root, another is called the desire, another is called the bout of fructify, and the other one is called Parabda already in an action. So these are the different states that the seed of material activities manifests itself. Root means it starts to enter. Desire means it's growing. Balamukam means it's about to manifest, and Parabda means it's already manifested, like that. Uh, so these are the different states of. Uh, how our desires manifest from the most subtle to the gross levels like that. Now, uh, when one takes initiation from a spiritual master, 
uh, one gets the freedom from the reactions of one's material activities, but still the desires for these material activities still remains. Therefore, one has to work in order to purify themselves from these desires and, and changing these material desires to spiritual desires. But still, even in the process of purification, the Parabdha karma is still some not very much active. What is that Parabdha karma that Krishna allows us to see? What is our attachments as they manifest in front of us in the day-to-day -day life? <clears throat> that way we can uh, understand what is our material attachments, our material contaminations, and uh, work remove them like that. Well, that's called parapta, things that are already manifest. And a lot of them are due to past activities and unfulfilled desires. So here, again, um, everything is held in reservation within the subtle body. Um, Prabhupada, in discussing uh, this point, explains that yes, that the subtle body is the, uh, what we say, reservoir of all material activities from this life and in previous lives it's stored in there. So that's why sometimes we have some strange dreams or some dreams that don't even have any meaning at all. They seem to be just chaotic is what happens is that the mind on the subtle level will throw together experiences in past experiences and manifest a type of combination of these experiences that look like something completely uh, distorted, meaningless, uh, weird, and sometimes even quite macabre. It's uh, quite sometimes quite spooky like that. That's why we don't really know the depth of one's uh, attachment to the material energy. Sometimes we think, and we also, as it says here, we apply to children, that um, we are advanced, we're free, we're not acting at, in any of the uh, ways of the material energy or engaged in devotional service. But still, that unseen reservoir of material attachments lies within the unconscious and sometimes comes to the conscious state through it, through situations. That's why it's important for devotees to avoid certain situations which will activate certain material desires. Although the desires don't go away simply by not coming into contact with the activity, still by, by coming in contact with, a, uh, with an atmosphere that is volatile to bring those of desires, then one might find themselves again acting on these desires and then again falling down into the material energy. That's why it's important that devotees always keep good association, good Krishna conscious association. So although we become protected by that atmosphere and uh, we can become free from the effects of these unseen subtle desires which manifest both in dreams and in our waking state of consciousness. We see sometimes a person is engaged in devotional service for many, many years and apparently making much advancement. But at one point something happens and then all of a sudden they're no longer active in devotional service anymore some unseen uh, desires started to manifest because the process of Krishna consciousness means the process of purification of the heart. And the purification of the heart sometimes comes in the form of actually experiencing the awareness, not necessarily experiencing the desire, but the awareness of the desire in order for us to... Uh, become what we say, get rid of it. Uh, the example is given that when you want to make ghee, you take butter and you put it on in a pan and you put it on a very, very low flame. And then gradually 
the fat the part starts to separate and it goes in two places. It goes to the bottom and it goes to the top. So when we chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra or when we engage in devotional service, we're getting purified from our material desires and our material attachments, our material tendencies like that. But in the course of that purification, a lot of times these things rise to the top and become part of our consciousness and awareness. Therefore, it's explained that the devotee has to let them go and not dwell on them. When one dwells on sunset, sense objects, either in a positive or in a negative way, of course, in a positive way, they will grow fast. In a negative way, they also still grow. Sometimes the devotee will think, well, I have to see, I have to uh, uh, know what I, my contaminations is so then I can get rid of them. But a lot of times by thinking about these things, we actually, we, we're actually giving energy to them. Although we're thinking about them in a negative way, still the fact that they exist in the mind means they're getting support from the consciousness like that. But therefore one should always be very diligent to keep the mind connected to everything, everything spiritual or anything spiritual. And of course, the easiest and direct and most easiest way is to chant Hare Krishna. Chanting Hare Krishna becomes, you know, the factor where we can protect ourselves at any time from any external or even internal uh, arising of material consciousness or material desires. We can simply chant, and that simply by that chanting, um, the and it pushes out these, uh, these material tendencies, material desires, material thoughts like that. So we have the weapon to destroy that, but then we have to continue the practice. And as, as time goes on, we'll, we'll continue to make advancement to the stage where the mind will no longer be affected by the external uh, uh, environment and the mind will no longer uh, become, when we say, uh, gravitate to these types of thoughts anymore. It'll be natural to think of Krishna. It'll be natural to want to engage in devotional service. Uh, even if you're in the presence of sense objects, it says that uh, a person who is on that on the spiritual platform Although the Bayman might be impressed, they may have sense objects all around them. Uh, they actually don't even notice them, although they may see them, but they don't notice them. There's a difference. Not noticing them means taking into account their presence. Seeing them means that, that just like you see anything else in part of your environment, you're in your house and there's a door in your room, there's your, the floor to the room. There's some things that are in the room. You don't constantly notice these things, they're just there. So in the same way, a devotee who's on the spiritual platform will not become attracted or averse to material sense objects, although they may appear to be present. Even within dreams, where it appears that we have less control over what happens, still when a devotee becomes a little purified, a very few, um, let me say more, not this a little, but has made su sufficient spiritual advancement. Even in the dreams, when these sense objects arise, they can, the devotee will immediately in the dream run for those, from those objects or those objects will disappear simply by the fact that the devotee is not at all focusing on them. <laughs> so even it said that when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu <clears throat> Um, chastised, uh, let's see, what was his name? His name was, uh, Haach. he was a sannyasi who was chastised by Lord Chaitanya. I think it was Kala Krishna Das. Can't remember him exactly. Ramanand Puri? Huh? Is it Ramanand Puri Maharaj? No, oh, it was someone else. It was he had he had uh, 
begged rice from a very elderly lady who was a pure devotee. But when he was begging, his mind was a little distracted by her. Um, was it Chota Haridas, Guru Maharaj? Huh? Chota Haridas? Chota Haridas. Chota Haridas. Yeah, Chota Haridas. So uh, when Lord Chaitanya gave him a strong chastisement, all the Lord Chaitanya's devotees said they immediately gave up thinking about women, even in dreams. So they had the power to um, push that out. It explains that it, they, they no longer thought of sense objects, even in dreams, because they were fearful of how, how, how heavy Lord Chaitanya had chastised Chantra Haridas. Although he didn't act on the physical level, but because he was a sannyasi, his mind was disturbed by this lady, although she was quite elderly. Still, his disturbance was noted by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and he made an example out of him by teaching the principles of strict sannyas. And therefore, he said that he didn't want to, again, see Chotar Haridas. So Charita Haridas actually committed suicide because of that. But in his subtle body, he was associating with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He would sing to the Lord Chaitanya and Lord Chaitanya would be very pleased. So he associated him with him on the subtle platform, although he had given up his physical body. That's a nice pastime in Chaitanya Charita. Okay, these are some points. How, how unmanifested, subtle uh, objects, uh, subtle sense objects, or gross sense objects that are not manifest, appear either in the mind or even in the dream state, simply because of our previous association with them. Okay, so any questions or comments? Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances all to Mr. Srila Prabhupada. So thank you so much Maharaj for your valuable association and time. So uh, I will request devotees if they have any questions or they want to share any realization, they can please go ahead. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances or glories to Srila Prabhupada. Guru Maharaj, this question of sense objects in dreams, would it be that as we um, control the mind more and more in our waking state and bring it back to Krishna more and more, then even in our dreams, these things will torment us less, less and less? Uh, yeah, that's okay. true. But you also have to be careful of the environment you're in, because if you're in a polluted environment, you'll also be some, even if the, you have made some advancement, you'll find that in that polluted environment, you can be affected by the energy around you. That's why it's always good to keep, make sure the environment is free from any negativity. Many places have different energies, so it's best to live in the temple. Sometimes when you move into a house or an apartment, that place has energies from the previous residence or even the previous, previous residence. And so we may pick up that energy also. So there we one should always be careful to keep your environment free from these negativities. When you find yourself in that environment, then it's best to constantly play, 
bhajans and kirtans throughout the whole day to help purify the atmosphere. And of course, purifying your own consciousness, strengthening your own consciousness through more and more chanting. Yeah, so there are five ways that one can become affected by negativity. Uh, and one of them is polluted environment. Mm -hmm. It can also affect your health also too. So we have to be careful, make sure the environment is uh, Krishna conscious or at least sattvic. Mm -hmm. Those of us who travel, we have that experience a lot coming into different environments. And we experience sometimes that either the positive energy in that environment or the negative energy. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances and grace to Srila Prabhupada, grace to your help, yourself. Uh, thank you so much for the wonderful class, Guru Maharaj. Uh, so I have a question, Guru Maharaj, like, um, so whatever desires we have, um, like uh, initially, um, I used to have a lot of things in my mind, uh, but nowadays uh, uh, coming into Krishna consciousness, it's all in the back of the mind, in front it will not come. But... Um, so does uh, um, these last long, uh, Guru Maharaj, like how they will go off uh, permanently? Yeah. The more you become purified, the less, the, the more these thoughts and desires and uh, residues of previous experiences will gradually dissipate and ultimately dissolve completely. It's a matter of consciousness and consciousness as consciousness expands towards Krishna, because Krishna consciousness means expanded consciousness. So one of the things we have to be very careful is what we eat. If we eat food cooked by non-devotees, then we can expect to have, you know, negative thoughts and also sometimes find it very difficult to chant Hare Krishna because of that. Um, so yeah, so the food should always be prepared, prepared nicely and offered to Krishna with devotion, done in a very clean way. But yeah, as you say, the thoughts have now taken, uh, play, taking root in the back of the mind, and they can come out at any time under different circumstances. One should not be worried about that. One should just maybe, one should just continue to chant the holy names and purify your consciousness. That's good, matters. Thank you so much. The problem is when these things arise, we st if we have, if we still have an, an attraction for them, then we're in trouble. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Krishna. Hare Krishna, dear Maharaj. Then with Pranam, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much for your wonderful association every Friday. It helps us a lot to uh, keep us self, ourselves fixed in these times. Thank you so much. You come here uh, even uh, with your bad health and... Uh, all the uh, busy routine. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. 
it's my good fortune I get the chance to, you know, to speak with to the devotees. Thank you. Hari Bol. Yeah, Hari Krishna Maharaj. Then Dr. Ramagush to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your association every Friday. It's a very blissful day every Friday. And uh, sorry for the confusion. It's like uh, we didn't know that the time has changed and I should have informed you before. But, uh, I wasn't aware of that, that they changed one week before. We are going to change from Sunday. Uh, so. Yeah, we changed the week last Sunday. <laughs> yeah, we are going, going to change this Sunday. So first, first week of... Uh, okay, make sure that change doesn't... <laughs> Thank you so much. We are always waiting for you. And Maharaj, give me your blessings. Uh, today is my birthday. So today? Today is my birthday. Oh, nice. Very nice. Uh, thank you. And thank you for uh, all your association. Please forgive me if I have done any Hmm. Yeah, we also have one lady online. It's uh, also her birthday too. Manasi Ganga, is that you? You're there. Manasi Ganga. Yes, Guru Maharaj, she is there. I think. Yeah, that's her birthday too. I think. Yeah, she can come with you. Hare Krishna, thank you. Happy birthday, Manasi Ganga. May you never take birth again. Haribo. Haribo, thank you. Happy birthday, Mataji. Happy birthday, Samagori Mataji. Thank you. You got two birthdays today. We wish you the best. And on these birthdays, you have a great, you receive the blessings of the devotees and you get the chance to. Uh, serve the devotees more and more. Thank you, Maharaj, for your blessings. Thank you. Yes, thank you for your blessings, Maharaj. Guru Dev. Hare Krishna. Okay, so we'll stop here and then uh, We'll see you all soon again, unless there's some more com comments or questions. Do we have, do we have any questions? On Is there any questions on the chat? No. Okay. All happy birthday wishes. Okay. Hare Krishna, so we can end here if no one has any questions then you need realization. So thank you so much, Maharaj, for giving your valuable association and time. Vancham Kalta Rubishi Kipa, Sindhu Evcha, Patitana, Pamne Bhu, Vaishave Bhu, Namon, Nat Koti Vishavandi, and Prabhupada, his holiness, Chandra Mori Swami. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna.